Ah, see him a beast when he hear that sound like ah, Yeah, beat on the beat when he hear that sound like Ooh, Yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like ha, Yeah, me, I'm a G right here in the All right, line. ladies and gentlemen, CFFC 121 right around the corner And uh, one half of the main event is with me today The champ is here, Jose yes, Perez What's up, my man? How you doing? Doing good, man. Getting ready. Uh, celebrating the 4th of July right now, but uh, but getting ready for the uh, weekend coming up. That's dedication for media, man. You're joining us on 4th of July. No days off. Gotta love it. And thank you for joining me. Good to finally talk yeah. to you. Part of the job. Yeah, nice to talk to you, Jake. So we had some uh, some very minuscule, I, I don't know if it's a beef or misunderstanding, but you know, you thought I'm always about the Philly guy. Philly guy no matter what. Philly, Philly. And that's not it. That's not it. It's just that I'm closer to the Philly guys. I meet them and they're my, they're my buds, you know? So now that I met you at one, what was it? One eighteen or whatever. You're my bud. I'm rooting for you every time out now, my man. That's what I was telling. That's what I was just telling Zach. I'm like, uh, I'm like we had this little like thing, this little whatever thing. And I'm like, not a big deal. I'm like, but this is like solidifying. Like, all right, we're good. We're good now. So that's but what this is. This is, this is our, we're good interview. People like, I don't know. People like hold me to a, uh, what's it called? Like a, a, like a level of accountability or whatever, being a journalist, right? I can't be biased. I can't do that. I'm not a journalist. I'm a media member who likes to promote fighters. So I'm going to be biased. I'm rooting for Jose Perez in this matchup. And uh, as a fan, dude, we haven't seen you fight in o- almost a year. What have you been up to? Where have you been? Uh, trying to uh, get the answers to the same questions everybody else was doing, man. Uh, every time I fight, that's everybody's saying like, you know, if you win this, this is the one that gets you the call, right? You know, if you win this, from from members of the promotion to teammates to my manager, even you know, my former manager was kind of uh, this, this really what it's been. Uh, when the Capaldo thing happened, everyone's like, "Listen, I don't even think you need to fight again. I'm pretty sure you're going to get a call." Um, you know, just as far as like MMA math goes, like Capaldo had the call, I beat Capaldo, right, right. I get the call, but that math didn't like add up. And I was still waiting. Same thing. And I figured that the title would be, you know, the icing on the cake. <laughs> it would be the icing on the cake for the uh, for the call. But um, it wasn't enough. It didn't it didn't work out the way that I thought. So, I mean, same idea as this one. It, it's just kind of like take the fight, wait around, see if we get anything. Um, talk to other promotions as other options and stuff like that goes. Like, uh, you know, maybe other options aside from the UFC. But. Really, it was just figuring out the business end of things and, and trying to, you know, nothing that actually had to do with fighting, you know, no injuries, no, no, nothing like that. Just trying to just trying to put myself in a position where I get paid for these fights, because I like to put on exciting fights. It's it's partially for the fans. It's it's a big part for me and just in my nature to, to go out there and, and just fight, you know, uh, prideful guy. So, I mean, I'm going to take damage, you know, uh, I don't assume I'm going to have the longest career and that's okay. Cause I'll go with quality over quantity, but, uh, but if I'm going to do it, I just got to make sure that those fights are, are something that I get paid for, you know? And I mean, w- that's a good place to start with the UFC because that's, I don't know, between you and Dennis Bazookia and uh, you know, um, just, uh, there's tons of regional fighters around the world who are on the brink and have seemingly been on the brink for multiple fights. You are one of them. Like, I don't know if you saw this. UFC even put out an article about 2023 fighters to watch on Fight Pass, and you're the second fighter they listed. So you have to think a win gets you there, man. But like you said, you've been there before, promised and been told, you know, this is it. After this, you're in. So assuming that's the case this time, which I think it has to be, is there a route you would like to take, like tough contender series, short notice, or it doesn't matter? Oh, I mean, well, it doesn't matter. I would say... So there's the dream. Like when I was a kid, I grew up watching MMA and, and the most MMA I could get was was the Tough House. I, was, mm-hmm. I loved watching the Ultimate Fighter as a kid. I mean, I doubt that they're going to do 45 since they just did, they're doing 35 and 55. Um, and on, on the real, it being realistic, being away from my family for that long, just because I got the kids and stuff, that's not, uh, I don't think that's the best way to do it. And I just think that, uh, the ultimate fighter has lost its steam. People don't really watch the ultimate fighter as much as they used to. Um, now they, you know, watch the contender series or just watch the UFC when, you know, those fighters actually do make it. But um, so it used to be a dream, but right now I'd say short notice fight straight in would be like the coolest way. Like if, if they called me and said, you know, skip Vassal, you're going to fight 
in the UFC or whatever, then, I mean, I'd probably do it. Yeah, that'd probably be the, the best way in, I think. Bo Nickel needs an opponent in your game. Fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they let that one happen. You're a couple of I don't think so up. either. <laughs> I don't think they let that happen either, but I would do it. And then, dude, you're talking about, like, getting paid through fighting, obviously, with the family and all that. That's the main goal. That being said, is, like, and you kind of touched on this, but UFC doesn't have to be the end-all, be-all, right? Like, especially with PFL coming in and doing as much as they're doing for fighters, like, is it does it have to be UFC, or is it anyone who can give you that opportunity? No, not at all. It doesn't have to be the UFC. Uh, the PFL is a big one that I really was interested in. Actually, that was kind of one of the reasons we were taking, like, such a long break, is we were setting up to hopefully go there. Um, and I had a contract and everything in hand. Actually, that that was like really, that was really far along. I was actually like pretty far into the process of, of getting it. And that one fell through just because of like uh, the contract I currently have with CFFC. Not to put too too much out there, but uh, right. but no, PFL is definitely an option. And, and if I get through this contract uh, with CFFC and, and I just haven't gotten that call from UFC, then I know that, I'll be nine and one at that point and easy pick in Zach and Dan there, pick where I wanted to go. If I make it to that point with the fights, you know, with the fights I've had and the way I've been fighting, if I make it to nine and one and the UFC just hasn't like come to their senses, then I mean, fuck God, PFL is definitely an option, probably a faster way to money. You know, I would say that UFC has the highest ceiling and the highest like capability of making large, large lump sums of money, which isn't, you know, if that happens, it's great, but that's not at all what I'm going for. I just want to, at the end of the day, if I make like a normal $75,000 or something like that, $100,000 a year, I'm all right with that. That's a good point. Give me man. a minute, Liv. Hey, little one. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, but I think PFL would be the fastest route there, honestly. Yeah. Um, and then like, we're going to get into Chris Vasile in a second here. I'm not, like, I'm not asking you to look past him as an opponent, but I just want to ask oh, this yeah. fun question. Looking at the UFC roster, the PFL roster, is there like a handful of names you're like, oh, that'd be a good fight someday? Oh, yeah. Obviously, me just in my nature that doesn't necessarily – I'm not always going to just go for the fights I think I'm going to win. Like uh, the recurring theme that I've had is I train my ass off for fights because I fight guys that I'm afraid of. Like Capaldo scared the shit out of me. When He's he good, knocked out Vassal, scared the shit out of me. I did not like uh, – it's a mix. You know, you want to do it. You don't want to do it at the same time. Um. But, uh, but yeah, dude, so Volkanovski would be the guy that I'd want to fight. Obviously, I, I don't think that I'm up to bo- like up to par right now. I just think that I haven't, like, uh, number one, I have a daytime job, so I'm yeah. not training full time. Number two, I'm not, uh, as I've gotten better, my biggest growth for as I, you know, when I fight a better opponent, I like rise to the occasion, I get better as a whole. And I think that that's like, uh, I need some, some more UFC fights, you know, and stuff like that before I got there. But Volk would always, obviously be the guy Ilya Taporia scares the shit out of me I would fight that guy um no I mean but I also think on the flip side there's guys that uh it's a promotion it's their job to like you know shine a bright light on these fighters and to do exactly that to promote these fighters and uh I think they've done a good job of that and I kind of believed in some of the hype for a while that like you know that these fighters are just on a whole nother level when in actuality, as I've kind of been fighting, I there's Capaldo looked unbeatable until I beat him. You know, like uh, Wells looked like he had it down, like he had it down to a science, really like meticulous by the books way to win. Um, until I beat him, you know, and uh, I just see like they're all making similar mistakes, and even in the UFC, I see these guys on that roster making basically the same mistakes that these other fighters in the regional level were making, and it's just things that I know that I could take advantage of, you know. Uh, I really, really do believe that, like, right now where I sit right now, I could be middle to to upper portion of the roster and then only go up from there because I'm just getting better as time goes on. And the next one, man, the title defense, Chris Vasile, you just mentioned his name. He, both you guys are coming off a win against Frank Wells. Uh, how you like this fight, dude? What are your thoughts on Chris? Um, I've, I've been saying it. I think Vassal has fought, like, a lot of guys that, were more popular in the area so he didn't really get his shine they didn't really like make him the focal point of the fights um he was kind of outshined by his his dance partner um but vassal's good vassal doesn't really make a lot of mistakes there's a couple things he does wrong that that you know honestly could be fixed like 
within a few months. So you could see a different fighter every time he comes out. But, uh, but no, I think he does a lot of things well. I think he's a good fighter. I just genuinely just think I'm better. And I think that uh, the difference is this fight is one that more people think I would win than, you know, the other. You know, like uh, when I fought Capaldo, he was more likely to win. Uh, more people saw him being the guy that was going to, like, knock me out or, or take me down or control me or whatever he was going to do. And Wells, I would say, was kind of more of a 50-50. You know, some people thought he was going to win. Some people thought I was going to win. But this one is definitely – heavy in favor of me. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I believe, you know, just off like tapology and people voting there, I think the general consensus is that, uh, that I'm going to be vassal. So that doesn't put pressure on me in the sense that like, uh, I'm going to lose. It just puts a different kind of pressure on me that I have to, uh, I always try to like go beyond the call of duty. You know, when I go against Capaldo, I would did more standing than I needed to. Wells, same thing, more standing than I needed to. Go against a jiu-jitsu guy, I'm going to grapple him. That's just like my nature. So I think that uh, the only way for me to really put a stamp on on this one and, and, and go beyond the call of duty is if I really decisively beat this guy, like like a world-beating performance, like something, something really legitimate, something really strong, and, and just kind of mitigate him in all facets of the game. And just from people I've been talking to, whether it's Zach or, you know, other fans of Cage Fury, consensus seems to be this fight's yours. The biggest risk is that one shot knockout power Vasile has. Is that something that yeah. concerns you at all? Um, I would say that I've been in that situation before. I mean, yeah. I've been on the <laughs> uh, both sides. I've been on it to where I faced it and overcame it. I've been on it, you know, to where I faced it and then face planted. Uh, so, I mean, it's nothing new. It's it, this is what it's always been. I mean, I'd say that that's really been, as far as matchmaking goes, it's it's not like they're calling out a black belt to fight me that has no hands. They're they've always been Issa Dalapaj, three wins, three knockouts. Let's put him up against Jose right after he got knocked out. All right, right. you know this guy is coming off a contender series. He should have the wrestling to stop Jose and the knockout power to finish him. It's something I faced before. Uh, I wouldn't say Wells necessarily has knockout power with his hands as much as his kicks, but yeah. nonetheless, someone that has the ability to, you know, stop my takedowns and maybe pick me apart on the feet. You know, I've I've had risks that were posed in every single fight, and and I just uh, – I've learned to count on myself. I've learned to know that, like, I can find a way to win, you know, not just find a way to survive like a lot of fighters, but find a way to win. Um, I just know that, that, that I can control the outcome. I can depend on myself to, to be there, you know. If I get hit and I get clipped, I, I can't really like fester on that too much because that's something out of my control. There's there's always an element of chance when you're, you know, playing the game of fighting. And, you know, aside from the what I think is a technical skill gap, I think you're, you know, in, in a lack of better words, levels above the guy striking and even grappling. Have you met him before in person? Because I also think you're going to have a pretty big size advantage over him. Um, I haven't met him in person, but I do know his height. I've I've met people that he's fought and seen him kind of like uh, measure up, and I know he's gonna be thicker than me. Is that boy is thick? thick boy, but, yeah. uh, he is a thick boy. But I'm definitely gonna have the length, and uh, I I'm almost a string bean, almost normal build. I'm kind of <laughs> in between that string. So I mean, I think I'll have the thickness, obviously, but uh, but I'll have the height. And I think when you just, you know, equal it out and, and put those both things together, I think I'm just going to be a bigger individual than, than Chris Vassal is for sure. And I tried to phase this question out of interviews, but I like to ask champions because you're the champ, call your shot. You got a prediction for me? Second round finish. I think the first round I'm going to figure him out and, and really just prove that I'm better. And I think the second round I'm going to come out and, and get my finish. And he's not special. He's not different. I'm going to take him down. He, whether he takes me down, I take him down, or he slips on a banana peel, all roads lead to me getting on the ground, me taking his back, and then me taking his neck because this is what I do to everybody, and I just don't see it stopping here. Just There is a guy out there that maybe could stop it, but but I'm not going to run into him anytime soon. And just based off of his last fight, I got the kind of jiu-jitsu you can't prepare for, not in six weeks not in six months, not in six years. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's levels above what these guys have. It's, it's not a, a laundry list of technical moves. It's, it's a handful of moves that you can see coming that you can plan for. And it doesn't make a difference because I've just done these moves. I put in the proverbial 10,000 hours into these moves and, and they're just, I got them down. You know what I'm saying? They, they, 
you can't stop them. You know they're coming. Everybody who's fought me knows I'm going to try to take your back and take your neck. If you if you don't know that, you're a fool or you haven't seen my fights, which kind of makes you a fool. But no one stopped it yet, and I just don't see this being the one that changes that. Who's that one person you're referring to? I don't know. I don't oh, know. Just, just someone out there. It's okay. just a, an idea. There is someone out there who's going to stop it. There's probably more than one, you know, but but that's why there's layers to the game. You know, rear neck and choke doesn't work. Go to the arm bar, go to the Kimuras and stuff like that. But uh, but just as far as like the, the open-ended game plan, I love taking the back. It's just a place in a fight where I feel safe. And I, I no one stopped me from getting to it yet, you know? You're heading down the Tunica for, uh, for the first time since your lone career loss, which was in tunica if i'm not mistaken you excited yep. to redeem that man yeah dude i'm one and one in tunica but undefeated in philly it's uh yeah what's I up gotta get that one back i don't know what that is i don't know what that is philly's a way more aggressive crowd than tunica tunica is as quiet as could be i think uh when i fought brandon gator my girl sat at like they had tables like instead of like seats up there they had tables so my girl sat at the same table as like brandon gator's family it must be like southern hospitality or something but oh geez super nice they did not like even cheering must have been awkward in that situation but um but now yeah uh one and one in memphis gonna go be two and one and uh get this guy out of there man fucking get this guy out of there and get my ufc contract or or throw a fit when I don't, one or the other, you know. <laughs> and why not Philly? Why didn't you come back up here in, uh, I guess they're coming back in September? Um, Time-wise, I was trying to go on the Atlantic City card last month just because then it would be 10 months instead of a, an 11-month gap, and it sounds a little less like a year. But uh, sure. they couldn't find me an opponent for June, and then uh, they were trying to find me someone from Memphis, like the Memphis area, for this fight, and – I think that that didn't end up coming up fruitful because they ended up finding Vassal for me. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, if I have another fight, if I have to have another fight, then yeah, dude, Philly. Philly's my spot. I'm, like, not even saying that like because of you. That's just Philly represents something for me. Philly's where I became a, a man in this sport. You know, like Philly's where I fought on my hardest fight. Philly's just been the, the recurring theme of what I've, you know, every time I come out, when I'm in Philly, I know I'm about to get into a fist fight. That's just what I know. I mean, you uh, came to 120 no, just like to Philly. hang out, dude. I came to 120 to, to coach Bo into fucking destroying oh, yeah, his right. opponent. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking at no, Bo right now on my Bo. poster. Oh, you got you got the 120 poster? I got the 120 poster. It's not in the background. It's go. above me, but yeah, looking good. No, I'm... you're all good. I need to get I need to get like posters and shit. I got an office, but there's like a lot of kid stuff in it, so that's not like it the most nice. manly place to do it. Yeah, this this looks nice. Right, a little kitchen. Come on, a little. Most Three most fighters pictures. just have like in the car, like yeah, what's up, dude? How you do? Like, oh uh, yeah, shaky camera. Like this. Yeah, it's yeah, like, right, cool. You no, that. that is one thing I said. I want to have like a good setup. I don't have it yet, but I'd like to have like a uh, like a decent mic, a decent camera, and most of all, a decent like back. Like you know, have like my posters. I have posters and stuff, but just to like hang it up cleanly and and have like mementos for fighting. I, w- I would like to have like a nice. You're the champ, man. You gotta have you looking good. The champ. And yeah. So, you know, not being, uh, not having fought for 11 months, are you looking to make up for lost time a little bit coming? Like you want to fight again in 2023? Oh uh, yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to just get on a roll. I mean, I, it's really, I had a crazy pace, like to start my career, like, and I really liked that. I enjoyed it. it. What I will say is it kind of burnt me out. Like as far as uh, there's, there's the type of training you would do just because you love martial arts and you're doing it to have a good time. This is your hobby. And then there's the, six to eight weeks of of camp is what they'll call it and that's like completely different and that's you know you in regular training you're gonna be learning new moves developing new skills trying things you haven't tried before being exposed to new things where when uh when it's time to like hunker down and train for a fight that type of training is repetitive you're doing things that you're really good at and just getting reps in it you're defending things that your opponent's really good at and just getting wrecks in it you know it's just repetitive you know it's not as fun it's grueling you're away from your family more that's the kind of thing that like almost makes you not want to enjoy it like you, you ate too much cake now you don't eat cake for a month you know if you would add one slice you'd been solid but um just too much of anything is is not good um i'd say that this little gap is uh wasn't preferable but it's i've i've gone back to training you know i've spent like months in the gym training 
with no goal in mind, just training because I love to train and training to get better, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that that's good, like a mental reset almost. Um, now I'm back to the period of time where I'm hunkering down and just doing repetitive movements, you know, getting ready for Vassal, but, uh, but no, I, I'd like to keep going after this. Maybe, maybe obviously not every other month like I did when I first started, but I'd like to get back to, you know, four, four or five fights a year, five pushing it, but maybe more around the four mark and, and just stay consistent uh, with fighting and, and man, ride it out until I'm done, dude. 30, by the time I'm 33, man, I want to hang the, I want to turn my back on this. I want to be done fighting. I don't want to be in the public eye at all. I'd, I'd like to coach and do stuff like that, but, but yeah, man, I got, five more years of this and yeah. just make good use of it. And, you know, my last question for you is you mentioned earlier, you don't get in the UFC or you don't get the call afterwards. You're just going to have a little temper tantrum to yourself. But another perspective, <laughs> another perspective of looking at that is if you, if for whatever reason, if you choose not to go to PFL, if UFC is stupid enough, they don't call you, whatever it be, does it ever, does it interest you at all to like solidify yourself in cage fury as one of the best to ever do it in the promotion, defend your belt a few times, becoming the or get in the Hall of Fame like Aljo just did? Um honestly no. Not to take anything away from it. Like I don't uh when I first started doing this, it was for the idea. Like uh fighting was like for the idea. Like, okay, like um if I'm a fighter, everyone will know that, you know, I'm not a loser or I'm not to be trifled with or whatever, you know, like emotional statement you're trying to make like through fighting that's like what it originated as when i was a kid i had no perspective of money or what i wanted or or to be rich or anything like that because when i started ufc fighters weren't driving bentleys and stuff like that they were right. normal guys that wore hoodies and tap out t-shirts you know um but right now with like the the wife and kids really all i'm looking to do is uh to do something i love to make money, it's not to be rich. It's, it's you know, probably if I didn't do fighting, I'd probably be a fucking loser anyway. <laughs> but, uh, like, to live a normal life. I don't need to make, like, two, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. That's not insane with, you know, fighting in the, the landscape of, like, what people make. It's not insane. But if that doesn't happen for me, that's okay. But but I need to make at least, like, a hundred thousand dollars. Like, have a decent yeah. living, you know. It doesn't really what I would be gaining is it's, I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it because if I don't do it, then I'm going to end up doing something that's draining. Like I'm going to work for someone else or do something that I might be okay with doing, but I don't have a passion for it. And like, that's, that kills me. That would kill me is to, to know that I have this like passion for this one thing that I really love to do, but I'm going to spend my life doing this other thing that I don't really give a fuck about. Right. You know? So if I could make this money, make this amount of money doing something I don't give a fuck about. And I can make the same amount of money doing something that I love. That's a no brainer to me, you know? So it's not that I'm fighting to be a millionaire, to be famous or anything like that. It's, I would rather be fighting than working at a factory or, or welding or, or being a carpenter. That's just, some people are just born to do certain things and I feel compelled that I'm born to do this. So I'm compelled to do this and make my money that way. So it's not uh nothing against the FFC. I just don't see myself only fighting for cffc and and ever really making like a comfortable living like i don't want to have to work i want to be able to like fill my days yeah. getting better and pursuing my goal like of fighting like just fighting and i just don't see cffc like paying me enough to to only do that but what has crossed my mind is when i retire i was like gonna tell rob like hey man like let me do something around here you know like let me be around fights i i I literally just want to make enough money so I could comfortably go watch other people fight too. Right. Like at some point, like, yeah, dude, I want to, I want to go to a UFC event. I've never been to a UFC event. I'm pretty positive. My first UFC event I'll ever go to is going to be when I'm like there. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just the life goal, man. It's, it's, it's about happiness, not necessarily about money, but money does play a role in happiness. If you're being realistic, it does. Money gives you freedom. It gives you time, you know? And that exactly. Yeah. Like if you, if you're below a certain threshold of like, you know, financial stability, then the only thing that matters is money beyond that point. If you want to say money doesn't matter, then that's true. But, but you need to get to that point and be able to like hold yourself. And, and I'm doing that with a regular job, but I would really like to meet that threshold doing something I love. And, and that would be just infinitely more fulfilling for me. 
For sure, man. And uh, Jose, before we get out of here, dude, I just want to give you the opportunity with all the fans you have, everybody watching on Fight Pass. Is there anything you would like to say to everybody as the champ? If so, the mic is yours. Take it away. Nothing in particular, man. Love you guys. I love I love G2. I love the fans. I love like everything that's been going on. Uh, none of this is possible. There's no glory. There's no – you need you need the fans and the critics to, to kind of make this all like worthwhile and worth doing. And I, I fucking love this shit. I love, I love doing this. I love, I've had the most fun in the past two fights, which were the fights that I probably say were my most challenging. Um, I like that people see what we're doing. I like that, you know, it doesn't matter unless it matters to you guys. It, you know, guys like you that are, that are going to pay mind to regional fighters. It, it only matters if it matters to you guys. So the fans that'll watch the regional fighters, it only matters if it matters to you guys. And, and it's just a, uh, it's a cool opportunity. It's a cool like niche I found in life like early on. And and if I could do this for the rest of my life, I would. I can't because your body isn't going to let that happen. Father but, uh, time. Yeah, father time gets everybody. But yeah, dude, I want to be around this shit forever. And the fans are what make it what it is, dude. It's it's a big deal. And, and the guys that give a fuck enough to actually like interview us and give us a platform to talk and say what we got to say. I'm just a fan with a microphone, bro. So thank you for the time and uh, giving me some attention and letting me get your story out there because, yeah, man, a lot of fans, a lot of people excited. And ladies and gentlemen on the Scrap News, if you're not familiar, this is Jose Perez, and he's fighting July 14th in Tunica, CFFC 121 on UFC Fight Pass. Jose, kick ass, brother. Can't wait. And uh, you get that double dude again afterwards, all right? All right. Thanks a lot, Jake. I appreciate it.